the interesting thing is like about two years ago, there was exactly in the same building, like the first like European gathering of uh, people in that time, it was an AR, VR gambling conference. And now we meet again two years later. In that time we had a lot of like illusions and uh, predictions how it's going to evolve. And we're going to now uh, discuss the state of virtual reality. Um, and for this, uh, we have Karel Hulet uh, from Neos VR, a social, uh, media pl a social VR platform. Um, then we have uh, Sergei Takchenko, who is into B2B VR solutions. And Artur Sikhov again um, from Somnium Space. So please, yeah, take place. <clears throat> Yeah, virtual, virtual reality, I mean, we got before already some small peek what is already uh, possible. First of all, I wanted to ask in the audience, like, who did not try a VR device yet? Who did not try a room-scale VR device where you can actually move in the room? For this, uh, we have here some demo devices over there. Um, after the panel, um, we invite you to try virtual reality to really get a feel because it's important to understand the, the, the medium by trying it. Um, which brings me um, to my, uh, uh, my first question. So please, uh, can everybody introduce himself and what are, what are you doing? So, so I'm Karel. I'm the co-founder of Social Metaverse Neos. And Neos is like a place where you can meet people, be with people. And uh, it's a platform for virtual reality experience apps and so on. Yeah, hi, my name is Sergey and uh, actually I'm uh, running a company that is mostly for creating anything in uh, web application or virtual reality also. Uh, so we don't uh, create our own product, we are helping our customers to build what they are willing to do. Uh, so we do it for uh, like in virtual reality for the last two years uh, and for other things uh, for most longer time. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Arthur. I'm founder and CEO of Somnium Space, uh, the social VR world, which I presented uh, a few minutes ago. So, um, my first question is, like, when, when, when did the, so my name is Conrad Gill, I started uh, VR, uh, VRSYS, a virtual reality conversions company, where our goal is to bring virtual reality technology to the places where it is not yet. Um, to transform the uh, technology into actual use cases and implement it in, in a useful way. And we got a long way uh, from there in the last uh, two and a half years. And um, I would like to, to ask you what, how your perception of virtual reality, mass market adaptation and market adaptation changed since you started in, in, in the industry? Because I've seen that there is a bit, a bit of a shift. VR was dead in between then it was not dead, and then it's always dead, and then um, um, we see use case after use case that actually works. So how do you see that? Let's maybe start with Arthur. Yeah, I mean, from my first sneak peek of VR was in 2015, where I tried uh, HTC Vive. I think they had a um, development kit at that time, and um, it blew my mind completely. And when I, you know, when I, uh, when I experienced the room scale VR and um, you know how big uh, and how good the technology already was at that time. I kind of at that time I envisioned already that everybody would be using VR within the next ten years, and I think um, from that time um, I, I I don't think I changed my mind. I think it actually became more obvious to me that kind of what I saw at that moment um, is going to happen, right? I don't actually care about how fast the mass adoption will happen. There's already so many VR devices, uh, you know, millions and millions of devices out there. Um, there is uh, many players and people going into VR every day. And I think it will just be accelerating. And with devices like Oculus Quest uh, and many more to come, um, it will be just faster and faster. So, yeah. So actually, I will continue. <laughs> so while well, we are solving uh, other issues, um, so actually, for my experience, uh, I thought that yeah, uh, I think last summer when uh, um, everybody is who are involved in virtual reality and augmented reality were, were waiting uh, for release of 
uh, magic lip uh, glasses. Uh, so it was really hype and uh, hype technology, and everybody uh, wanted to um, pick a, a piece of pie of, of it and uh, to be ready and prepared. So we have like also um, um, watching for this market, uh, trying to get customers like so they can be the first who will create in this virtual reality experience with say customers. And so after that summer, uh, something like, as you mentioned, uh, uh, so the virtual reality is dead. And so we just, so uh, don't, don't try to, to do this. Uh, uh, so we switch to something another. But eventually uh, customers keep coming. So like uh, um, during our customers, like an uh, hour ago, uh, one of, uh, during our uh, conference an hour ago, my, one of my customers approved another project with, which, which will be in virtual reality also. Mm, unfortunately, because of NDA, I can't tell you what was it, what will be it. Uh, so yeah, I think that uh, mm, it is still a place for virtual reality now, uh, as well as for augmented reality also. So we got our investment uh, money in 2014 from Rottenberg Ventures at uh, River Accelerator, which were like the 10 best VR companies. They pitched it uh, back in 2014. And, and we cautioned like lots of our colleagues to, to take it slow, to, to budget well and be cautious with the money because it was like in the hype section and a lot of the, the companies didn't. So, so I, I think we are only like three companies out of the 10 left. So, so definitely if you are doing VR, especially like a, a platform or, or something that's dependent on, on a lot of consumers, on some network effect, then uh, I would still caution everybody to, to be really uh, thinking long term here because the, the headsets are still pretty, pretty large uh, and not everybody uh, is capable still uh, having and using a VR headset every day. Um, we, we think it's going to get better, that the VR headsets are going to be like uh, sunglasses, like that small and comfortable to wear and totally realistic. But it, it's going to take some time and, and as Arthur said, like right now it's very exciting already and it's going to only get more exciting. And what, what basically I realized is that uh, the, the market, in the beginning it like, was a bit overhyped, like okay, it will be mass market, mass market, everybody was running after the mass market, but in the end of the day it turned out that you know, the mass market, okay, yeah, this is eventually coming and growing slowly, there will come a point and there is a discussion that maybe this kind of devices will change it, so that's this Oculus Quest thing, costs like a gaming console, 450 euros, and can do everything to have a fully immersive experience, but those VR companies that focus more like on the B2B sector somehow, that they got business because there are use cases. It, it is hard to convince, but the applications that are there, um, they, they, are, they are to stay, um, in my opinion. And um, because, uh, Sergey, you're making a B2B VR, what are some use cases, what you have seen that uh, actually worked for, for, for B2B VR? Uh, actually, there are a lot of cases, uh, not only from my experience, but that, that are also like uh, hyped and popular, like uh, this case with uh, um, IKEA, that is, uh, so they produced some um, immersive technology, uh, like uh, augmented reality for choosing the furniture, and so you can see how it will be in virtual reality in your home. And uh, so a lot of other cases, like starting from um, uh, security scene, uh, some 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 guys are using it for um, uh, for like I don't know to to fright uh, uh, the customers. So what can what should happen and how it should looks like if you will not care about security? So uh, virtual reality is that case uh, that can be bring here. Uh, and so there are a lot of so I can uh, if you have time like an hour or so, I can continue to, to tell you because uh, it's uh, a lot of cases. So some of uh, companies from FMCG sector, uh, they are also involved in it, uh, like just to uh, see customer experiences, uh, supermarkets, uh, where to place the products, how it should look like, so the people will see how it looks like. Also a huge thing is about, uh, so virtual, virtual reality is, has great impact on our brain. Uh, like. Um, uh, this proven fact that uh, if you are you know, short, n not very high guy, uh, and so you may be not so um, cool uh, because of it, 
And so if we will have some record of, of like 360 video uh, with uh, my tones, <laughs> uh, so you can become a more, um, more cool, I don't know, I forgot these words in English, sorry. Uh, so, and uh, it's a lot of things that can be implemented in virtual reality and it can be really work. It's not just about fancy things as to show in different way the product, uh, but it also has a huge impact on, on, on a huge amount of things. Yeah, and one uh, very big application um, is education. And uh, Karel, you have some experience uh, with uh, educational uh, applications. Yeah. So, so we actually started as an educational company. Uh, we made uh, like a human body. You can go in. Uh, it's called uh, the school bus, I think, in America. In, in Czech, it's called Blitten with Život. I'm not sure what's the German <laughs> counterpart. But it's, it's like the, the kids could go inside the, the human body and have these experiences, go outside the, uh, like the classroom. They've been to like hundreds of times, literally. And, and then they can have experience. The key point was keeping the teacher, like not, not trying to keep, keep the teacher out, but actually uh, making the teacher in control in this new environment. And that, that's actually why we started this multiplayer platform thing, because we didn't. We went to all the companies in Silicon Valley, and we didn't find like a platform where we thought that this uh, could exist, exist and de develop in. That's, that's kind of how Neo started, and, and, and so the education is very, uh, uh, very uh, effective in virtual reality because the environment is Im immersive. So you feel immersed, you are in the situation and especially your lower brain believes you are in a, in a different place. And as we humans evolved, uh, we are wired to, to, to uh, learn in new situations, in new environments. So uh, just by the, by the act of being in a different place, uh, by feeling being in a different place, you open your brain and, and learn better. And then this, the second point is you actually have the, the, thing, the things you learn about. So you, you see the blood vessels and the uh, things. You can meet the people you are, you are uh, thought uh, you are learning about. So it's yeah. very powerful. And what I also think is like where it's very strong is because you lose, you, you, you get rid of one layer of abstraction especially in the human body experience, like you see it, everything in the right, real size. When you look in the book, it's like, yeah, okay, you have to abstract like how, how big is this or how, how big is a mountain or how deep a mountain drill goes, for example. Or a okay, cave and like in virtual reality, you're able to like really experience it and this is making it so, so strong for, for, for education in my opinion. Yep. Scales are a big, big yeah. one. You can see little, little tiny things or little huge things in your uh, scale, human scale. So it's actually one of the first applications that you should download is Neos the Universe. Neos the Universe. It's, it's free on App Store. So you have a travel from like quantum level, what we were talking before, till like the end of the universe. Yeah, and the, the whole observable universe. And, and I think even beyond, like there's the whole cluster. And um, another application where uh, we have two uh, uh, companies here who, who do that is uh, like the, the, the social aspect. I'm personally a very big fan of collaboration in virtual reality because it allows you to make conferences, to be in the same room and you're synced in there. It's like, when did you decide to make a social VR platform? As when, Artur, when you, you said, okay, this medium has to be social. In 1999 when I played Altima <laughs> Online. No, I'm not joking, it, it is like this. Um, so I experienced this <clears throat> virtual worlds, uh, but not in VR, but just virtual worlds, 3D worlds from 1999 when I started playing Ultima Online and of course, the dream was to see those worlds from inside, right? Just those things running there, nice, but I wanted to be there. And um, that's why the key moment came to me when I experienced the HTC Vive, when I saw that, oh, the technology is actually here and it will just be getting better, obviously. It was obvious at that moment. So I think um, that was the, the, the moment. And um, why social? Because, um, you know, we humans are social species, so we are doing everything in, in, uh, in social environments. And that's why, um, you know, the Ultima was social, the Second Life was social, I, I wanted to be around people in some environments, so that was kind of a no-brainer, there was a natural thing. All the books we read, all the you know, science fiction, there's always somewhere a world where you immerse yourself with other people. So that's why uh, it was a no-brainer to 
uh, to kind of go that direction. And yeah, I mean, today you can go to a live concert, uh, which, you know, where performer is in the uh, uh, virtual reality headset playing his guitar. And, you know, we're standing there listening to the music and uh, clapping and dancing. And it is very, very immersive. You believe that you are on the concert, which is actually true, because the sound is exactly simulated in the exact way as it will be in the real life or close to exact way how it will be in real life. So your brain perceives it as a real concert. So one of my favorite applications was like when my daughter went uh, to Bulgaria and instead of phone calls, you put an Oculus Go headset on and then you're spending actual time with each other in the same room. You can have, because usually when you're talking with the kids on the phone, it's like, yeah, hi, uh, are you good? Yes, what we did today? And then the conversation is over. But uh, VR enables you basically to spend time with each other. And um, there, is this, um, there is this strategy that VR is an antisocial experience. So it's whenever, I tr whenever you say something like, like yeah, VR, and they say, no, this is, uh, is antisocial because you're hiding yourself behind some, 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 some glasses and you isolate from yourself. I, I say that the opposite is true through these uh, uh, experiences because it enables you to, to share really time with somebody. You deliberately spend time with somebody. When we're going to like, meet in VR, we're spending time with each other. When we are on the phone, one guy is driving a car, the other one is uh, sitting on the beach, and there is not really a connection, but when you're uh, meeting in VR, and I think that this is the strength of, of, of virtual reality, that you share the same space, you deliberately spend time with each other, and you can do these next activities next, and still have a conversation. Uh, for me, it was the, um, the, the key moment when I had the disc golf game with some dude from America and talking about real estate visualizations, like 60-year-olds on the golf court. Uh, so. And with this uh, uh, social uh, world, one thing what comes in, 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 in place is like economies. Yeah? How do you think that uh, the virtual economies in virtual reality will evolve? Because like, um, things doesn't cost anything to reproduce like in the real world, but possession is still something. Um, how do you solve that in, in, in Neostar? So, so in Neos, we found out that people are not valuing like a lot of, uh, like you said, uh, possessions. And, and actually, if, if, if people come into, into Neos or some social space, they, they, they are over, overwhelmed. That, that it's large and there's everything and most of it is for free. So they actually want something smaller. That, that's, that's not what usually happens in, uh, in a real, real world. It, it kind of over, overwhelms the, the, the human nature to hoard stuff. So, so that's, that's why our planet is not doing uh, as, as well right now, because all the people are hoarding a lot of stuff and going a lot of places by planes and stuff. So, so uh, this, this kind of stops working in VR, because there's like everything. And, uh, and uh, the, the thing that has value is relationships. Uh, is uh, spiritual values and its uniqueness. So, so uh, if, if you have like some unique property, some, I, I don't know, like a house that's, that's very unique, that, then that has still value. And, and so, so we are building uh, a Neo store where you can buy and uh, the, these, these things and we are supporting our, our creators that are creating content for, uh, for Neos. And also the, the, the social stuff. Um, Neos or people in, in meta spaces uh, are very tribalistic, so so um, they uh, it it kind of works like tribes, and the, the, that's the fundamental reason why we are all alone. Uh, we have like hundreds of uh, friends on on Facebook, but we feel alone because we are wired to work as a tribe, and that it's evolutionary well very good to feel bad when your tribe isn't connected with you. And in virtual reality, people actually uh, uh, create this tribe that's very interesting in these early stages to, to, to observe. Yeah, and it also allows like special interest groups to like really connect with each other and, 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 and find each other. And, and this is why I always when the question comes like, is VR already mass market? I say like, are a lot of niche markets where it fits to special interest groups who use it just as a medium um, are a lot of niche markets a mass market? Is VR already mass market? 
I mean, Beat Saber, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry for uh, being uh, so obvious, Captain Obvious here, but Beat Saber was the number one selling game in the whole gaming industry for a while, so not only in VR, so I mean, uh, that gives you a kind of an answer, but um, uh, it depends, you know, who you ask. Uh, I also uh, get a lot of kind of stupid <laughs> questions like why, but the VR is failing, and, and, and I'm, I'm always asking for whom, you know, for whom it's failing, uh, because for... Uh, many companies are actually thriving, so like, why, why, would we, why would you say so? But there are people who believe in this, and look, for me, I think VR is already a mass market. Um, it's a well-established market, which um, I don't see a scenario where it will fail at this moment, because the experiences people get are so deep and so good that they want to get those experiences again and again. And I'm not saying about the money, I'm not talking about anything else, just about the good experience, that's it. Yeah, with me, uh, so for both questions, uh, so I'm maybe uh, not so, uh, so guys have uh, their own um, social platforms with VR. Uh, I think that um, VR is a good thing and uh, in particular places it's really uh, helpful. And it's bring money, like uh, if we are talking about um, uh, company who building a property and uh, so just to attract clients, they uh, can bring a manager, bring the client, drive to the property, show something, and it will be not that they will get because it's still building. And with virtual reality, they can save money uh, just about the road, about the involvement of their managers, and they can provide with this experience, with so how it would look like, they can change the color of the, of the walls, uh, the, the color of carpet and other things. In this case, uh, involving of virtual reality will uh, help to save money. Uh, so saving money, bringing money to the company. So in this case, uh, virtual reality uh, is, will help uh, from the economic part and uh, also it will live uh, because, uh, because it's useful. Um. And uh, before we go to uh, audience questions, like where do you see technologically um, VR in the like next five years? Maybe we... I'm still waiting for Samsung to kick Oculus S, but um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think, I think uh, um, in, in terms of uh, technologically, we'll see huge improvements in, in VR headsets. I don't think we will see an, an amazing re resolution improvements because I don't think it's needed anymore. Uh, resolution on some of the headsets uh, is amazing already and it gives you that presence feel. So why would you, you know, push it to the limit? Um, but um, I, think, I think it will be just a uh, gradual, um, let's say gradual improvements. Um, every one and a half, two years, we'll get new devices which will be getting cheaper and better, which will drive the, the market, uh, you know, market adoption to, to a faster pace. And um, definitely I believe in, in this kind of sci-fi uh, futuristic, like uh, Carl said, uh, you know, sunglasses style of headset, which can be AR, VR at the same time. Somewhere in the horizon of 10 years, we will see some you know, mainstream working prototypes or even the device uh, which will come out. And that will allow people to use this technology even more. Uh, and that just proves that you know, uh, people, as I always say, within maybe five years, six years of time, we'll see everyone or majority of people in the world using VR at least one or two hours daily. Like we use our mobile phones, it will be on your desktop, on your, on your desk, and you'll be just taking it and using it for whatever reason. It could be work, social, play games, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Arthur because, um, so actually, um, my vision is also that it can, it can be uh, sunglasses with great resolution, with great contrast, not that we are having right now with uh, Microsoft things and, and other. Uh, and um, so maybe in far, far future it will be contact lenses with uh, all these effects, like to, with augmented or virtual reality. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that um, uh, this is one, one thing that will uh, help to uh, provide virtual reality to everyone. And another thing is also that uh, like uh, such a big companies as Samsung, Apple, uh, they still um, trying to do um, and creating things for 
augmented and virtual reality. Uh, I see news with uh, patents uh, for um, like new wearable devices and other things. Uh, so I think uh, we will see the future. It's not like today is uh, the dead, dead period for virtual reality. It's uh, some kind of now we are waiting for a uh, great leap of development of uh, devices because I think this, this is uh, the stopper moment. Not that uh, we cannot um, find a, a way how to apply virtual and augmented reality to our um, daily life, but uh, the only thing that is missing is great devices. Yeah. So, so, so the virtual devices we have right now, the, the virtual goggles, are, are are basically in existence because of smartphones. Because in 2007 we had the iPhone, and then a huge amount of money was invested in display technology, and it got uh, the resolution got as high, and the and the uh, the parameters got as high. We could like stick your grandma. Uh, lens in front of it and have a great VR experience. That, that, that's uh, basically the VR headsets right now. And so it, it takes some time from 2007 to great headset in 2014-15. And uh, uh, the, the development for uh, VR specific displays that are heavily created not for smartphones f but for VR started and, and the pipeline is somewhat longer, but I think in like five years we could see a much uh, smaller form factor uh, because of a better in implementation of op optics directly in the display stack. So the display stack is like two millimeters and if, if we could get like optics or guide wires or something in the stack, in the actual display, not on top of it, then we could get to awesome displays. And I think like in five years we could see the beginning of that because the pipeline kind of should work out uh, for four to five years. Maybe foldable displays help to this as well. I mean, we are all want to have this foldable VR headset, perhaps, which has maybe to focus. Which yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So future is bright. I personally think that the, the technology already for the use cases that are there is there because for taking a phone call, this is perfectly fine. Um, for hanging out uh, in a social VR space, this is perfectly fine. For playing tennis, this is perfectly fine. Of course, it will gradually evolve, and I think what it needs is like just to show to people, because I, from 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 our experience um, in in VRSIS, we showed it to a lot of people, and like there's almost nobody who says, "Oh, this is this is crap." Yeah? Yeah. So like you show it to people, then then when you show the right applications, people understand what they can use it in in, in their life for. So you're all invited after the panel to try it out, and if you have some questions to anyone in the audience. Then we do that now. If not, then let's have a coffee and talk on the coffee. Questions? No. Nope. Come on, guys. Last last panel discussion. You need to ask questions. <laughs> Everybody's tired already. Mandatory. <laughs> Good. Then I give. Thank you very much. <laughs>